The pterygopalatine fossa is a space bounded by three bones, the sphenoid, the maxilla, and the palatine in here. If we were to pour plaster into the space, this is what the resulting cast would look like. So this posterior wall and roof is formed by part of the pterygoid process of the sphenoid. The medial wall is formed by the lateral surface of the palatine. And the anterior wall is formed by the posterior surface of the maxilla. Now to further simplify things, let's bring in a schematic 3D version of the space. We've collapsed it into a simple prism. Firstly, we'll discuss the arteries which pass through here. The maxillary artery enters through the pterygomaxillary fissure. This being the pterygoid process of the sphenoid and this the maxilla, this is thus the pterygomaxillary fissure. This here being the pterygoid canal, this branch is known as the artery of the pterygoid canal. And this being the pharyngeal canal, this branch is known as the pharyngeal artery. Through the sphenopalatine foramen passes the sphenopalatine artery. And through the inferior orbital fissure goes the infraorbital artery. Lastly, through the greater palatine canal, the descending palatine artery. Next, let's discuss the relevant nerves. Each of these nerves relate to this pterygopalatine ganglion, roughly in the centre here. The largest of these nerves is the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, which enters the space through the foramen rotundum. These two are connected by so-called pterygopalatine branches. We can imagine this nerve continuing through the infraorbital fissure, at which point it is referred to as the infraorbital nerve. And just prior to this, slightly proximal there, the zygomatic nerve departs. Here we see the nerve of the pterygoid canal, which moves with its companion artery. And so too goes the pharyngeal nerve through the pharyngeal canal. Through the sphenopalatine foramen goes both the sphenopalatine nerve and the nasopalatine nerve. Lastly, through the greater palatine canal, we have the greater and lesser palatine nerves. Retrieving all of the contents now, we begin to appreciate the complexity of this space. If it helps you, you can click the link in the video description below in order to navigate around this model yourself. For now, let's reintroduce our skull model to ground what we've learnt in the true anatomy. So here we have the entrance to the pterygopalatine fossa. We're looking through the pterygomaxillary fissure. And the pterygopalatine ganglion is our centerpiece here. The maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve arises from the foramen rotundum, which communicates with the middle cranial fossa, the inside of the skull, if you will. That nerve then passes through the space, through the pterygopalatine fossa, and then exits through the infraorbital fissure as the infraorbital nerve. This fissure intuitively opens into the orbit. Down here is the opening of the pharyngeal canal, which opens into the pharynx. Stepping back for a moment, we can imagine the pharynx moving through this space here. So the pharyngeal artery and nerve, both are transmitted through the pharyngeal canal 
into the space of the pharynx. And returning now to the pterygomaxillary fissure, through that we can see the sphenopalatine foramen. If we shift around to the nasal cavity now, here is the opening for the sphenopalatine foramen. So this foramen opens into the nasal cavity and provides passage for the sphenopalatine artery and nerve as well as the nasopalatine nerve. Lastly, the greater palatine canal communicates with the oral cavity. So passing through the greater palatine canal into the oral cavity, go the descending palatine artery and the greater and lesser palatine nerves. That's it for the structures and orientation of the pterygopalatine fossa. I hope you've enjoyed this tour. If you did like the video, make sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.